Tantra is a philosophy. It doesn't mean sex. And frankly, how it's come to mean that in the West is likely indicative of the mindset of the West. Now look, I'm not angry. And breathe. Nor am I particularly a yogic purist, to be honest with you. I don't like the dogma. I don't feel it's helpful sometimes. And we're fairly relaxed here in our teaching of the yoga tradition. I think you guys probably know that already. I think that's what my clients like when they come and work with me. They know there's solid boundaries, but we don't bash about with books. We don't create unreasonable expectations of you. We just transmit these ancient battle-tested teachings from direct lived experience, and there's nothing more powerful than that. But it does feel incumbent on me to set this record straight, as if I'm the one to set the record straight. Many people have been doing it, but this is my spin on it, in relationship to Tantra, because in an attempt to keep this sacred tradition alive, perhaps, and no one's to blame, and to make it interesting to a Western mind, perhaps, I think somewhere the wires have been crossed. Saying that Tantra is about sex is like saying a banana split is a health food option and it's one of your five a day. Yes, it might contain some banana or some banana derivative, but it isn't the real thing. It's just an aspect of it, talked about highly to make it seem tasty. Did I just inadvertently describe sex as tasty? Anyway, to continue this exploration, we need to dive a little bit deeper into what Tantra really is. And to do that, we need to define it. Tantra is the overarching philosophy, imagine it like an umbrella, that all of yoga is contained under. Hatha yoga is an offshoot of that umbrella. And Kundalini yoga is an offshoot of Hatha yoga. Tantra basically says that everything, and yes, I really do mean everything, can be used for your highest evolution. Now, I like this as a philosophy because, one, it's true in my experience. See, my path was hard, and I think many people resonate with that, with your own path, and I think mine was designed that way. Um, uh, who knows why, but so is most people's, you know. But also, too, it flips the script. It says victimhood is not really an option, but that if you must take that path of victimhood, as we all tend to do from time to time, then even that can be used for your highest evolution. Doing your sardana gives us the power and the audacity to put one foot in front of the other in this uncertain life. And it does this by making us aware of all of the things that limit and restrict us from seeing clearly and experiencing life clearly. So, if we are consistent with our yoga, it will, guaranteed, without a shadow of a doubt, reveal the hidden blocks in ourselves. In time, using Tantra as our philosophy, this overarching idea that says we can use absolutely everything as a way to create our highest evolution and reach our highest peak in our life. If we're using that as our philosophy and sadhana as our weapon or our machete to chop through the jungle of life, then we will notice all of our self-imposed limitations, even victimhood. No stone left unturned is basically the idea with this. So let's go back to sex. It barely even seems relevant to mention it now, with our definition of Tantra out the way, does it? Sex is just one aspect or dimension of oneself that can also be used as a way to evolve as quickly as possible. Though at a certain point, just like just well, basically everything, it too will become a limitation on our path. Because to really build and accumulate our prana, which is kind of what the aim of this whole game is, at some point that's going to require us to become conscious of the relationships and the karmic consequences of our sexual partners and relationships have. And this is an idea called Runana Banda. Runana Banda, very basically, is essentially saying, 
your body has physical memory like it's quite obvious isn't it you know it remembers your grandfather's nose it's on you in a sense so it has this physical memory in life that would be genetic but it goes a little bit deeper and it says um, we're going to be transmitting things between ourselves just through touch so my sexual partner or my lover or whatever however many or few that we have every time that we do that we're going to be downloading a little bit of their karma in a sense and that will have an effect on us and that will have to be digested in our system depending on our ability to digest based upon the amount of prana that we have in the system so this is where things get really exciting but also makes us quite conscious doesn't it okay well maybe if i'm not desirous of a sexual partner right now this might be why the intelligence in my body is almost saying you don't want to do that bud not right now because you might create more runana banda which of course at some point we'll have to get rid of but also it's going to make us conscious of the energetic drain that sex can have inside of ourselves. not specifically these runana bandas but more so that which is limiting us. We're coming back to this point. Sex is going to drain you of energy, especially if you're a man. See, sperm equals power. There is no doubt that it requires more energy to create a sperm cell because it's the seed of life in the male system than it does to create a hair follicle. And you're doing that day in, day out. And as such, the man is designed by nature to be able to conserve this form of energy and draw it upwards. See, if we're recklessly wasting that energy, we drain our energy stores and therefore we sort of begin creating a pranic debt. See, this is a limitation for higher experiential learning. But if this has got you all worried, don't fret. It's not like you have to fight against your sexual desires at all. That, that would look like suppression and, and nothing good has ever come out of suppression. But don't be surprised if as you practice that the desire and all the attachments around sex begin to fall away. But instead of it being a, a drag or something scary, I'll actually kind of become a pleasure rather than a curse. There are some experiences in this life that are just way better than sex. And as you begin to accumulate your prana, you begin to get a feel for that. And that's all a monk or somebody like that is ever doing. They're desirous of internal manifestations and they're seeking truth. And therefore, they put all of their effort into that. And they accumulate the prana or the shakti to be able to create these internal experiences. So if this hasn't scared you off and you want to take the same path that the greats went before us and perhaps in some way, shape or form, you've come to the realization that there's nothing out there for you anymore and everything is in here for you, then come and join us for our six month intensive. We're going to give you the tools to shift the trajectory of your life and create deep levels of profound fulfillment in your system. And if that is something that you're interested in, then apply in the link below. But whatever you decide to do, if you want to take this path seriously, then you're going to know how to take charge of your life force. And we dive into this in this video here, the silent hack that the spiritual teachers just start telling you about.